Good afternoon. My name is Brianna, and I'm on staff here at the Rock Church. I want to welcome you all to Nathan's celebration of life service. On behalf of the family, we want to thank you for joining us today, both here at the Rock and also to the many others joining us online. Sorry, this is harder than I thought it would be. We are all gathered today because Nathan touched our lives in some sort of way over the past 20 years. Whether that be at school, from his neighborhood, from his church, from his workplaces, from his sports teams, from his youth group, from his young adult group, and of course with his family. It is such a tragic loss that he has gone from us so early. Rhonda and Al, Ryan and Maria, Marcos and baby Lucy, Zach and JJ, Grandma Rachel, and all the other extended family, on behalf of the Rock Church, I offer you my deepest condolences to you today on the huge loss of a young man who brought so much sunshine into all your lives. How Nathan adored his family. We are praying for you today and are here to support you. Today we will grieve with you as a family and acknowledge the huge sense of loss and sadness that we all feel. We are also here to celebrate the gift Nathan was to each of us and to reflect on our precious memories of him. We are also here to thank God for the time we had with him and be comforted in knowing that Nathan is with Jesus today. I've had the privilege of knowing Nathan for the last eight years. I met him as an energetic 12-year-old, and he continued to bring that same life, laughter, fun, and enthusiasm to every place he was up to his final day. I had the honor of being his youth pastor for the last five years and see him grow and be such a fine young man with a heart of gold that cared deeply for others and was an amazing friend to many. Nathan was so willing to serve and help wherever he could, and he had a genuine love for God and a desire to grow grow closer to him. Some of my most precious memories of Nathan are from camp every summer, seeing him with the kids from Bibleville, the youth from Shift, and then hanging out with his own peers at C23 camp, loving every minute of the day. His graduation was a huge momentous occasion in his life, and I was so blessed to be there that day to celebrate with him. Last summer, he had turned 19 and was technically too old to still come and be a youth camper, but he begged me to let him come to Montana as his last hurrah for youth group. It was so exciting to cross the border with him, to spend 20 hours in a van with him and the rest of the youth, to be a part of his first experience seeing the mountains. Nathan was a very special young man, and I will miss him dearly. Let's pray together. Lord, we all have our own stories of how Nathan brought us joy into our lives. We thank you for the time we had with him. Our hearts are hurting today, and so we invite you into our sadness and our pain, and we ask your Holy Spirit to come and to be our comforter. God, I ask that you would surround his family with your love in a very special way today. I ask that you would be with us, Lord, as we remember Nathan, the amazing young man you made him to be. Amen. So just before we start the official service, I just have a few announcements. COVID. This is already an extremely difficult day for everyone, and COVID certainly hinders our ability to show the love and offer the condolences that we want to to the family. The family wants to follow COVID regulations, and that is why the family was seated before we got started today. But at the end, Rhonda and Zach will make their way to the back foyer, and you will be able to see them then. Um, You'll be able to say hello, give an air hug, and offer your words of sympathy to them. So we ask at the end of the service that everyone remain seated 
at until the ushers direct you to the foyer and you'll be dismissed from back to front. We ask during the service that you stay seated and that you keep your mask on throughout the entire service, including the singing, and just remember to maintain adequate physical distance. The family would love for you to share a thought or a memory of Nathan during the open mic time after the eulogy. At that time, when you come to the front, you can remove your mask to speak into the microphone as the mics will be sanitized between speakers. Those of you who are watching online, you can also share your memories, your thoughts, and your condolences in the chat as the family will be able to read these after the service. If you would like your comment publicly shared, please indica indicate that in the chat and we will try to share some of them during that time. So I'm going to call Amy and Leah up. Worship was a way that Nathan connected with the Lord. It was a very special time with him. I remember many retreats that we went on together where he would just be soaking in God's love for him. And so we're going to do that together now. Good afternoon. Um, just like Brianna said, we love Nathan. And my name's Leah. Um, I knew Nathan from when he was seven years old and he started coming to Bibleville. And he was just a cute little boy with those little glasses, that's what I remember, and a big, big smile. And he always had a big, big smile. I don't remember many times of him not having a big, big smile. Um, we want to share in some worship time, just like Brianna said, it was special to Nathan. And we felt like this was a good way to honor him and to acknowledge that he is in heaven. And that brings me much hope. I hope that it will bring you much hope. He had a real relationship with God here. And so we're going to do that together, and we invite you to worship with us if you'd like, or just sit and remember. Remember all of the beauty of life and the beauty of Nathan's life. But he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Whom the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Whom the sun sets free, oh, is free. child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. 
are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. Hello, everyone. My name is Brooklyn, and I've grown up with Nathan since we were kids, as many of us in our church community have. We've gone to church together, gone to camp together, been in leader training together, and Nathan was a beloved part of our ministry team here at the Rock Church. He's greatly, greatly missed. I'm honored to be here to read scripture for us today. Romans 8, 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? On behalf of the McMillan family, we would like to begin by thanking everyone who is here today in person and watching online for all of their prayers and condolences. The family has received countless of phone calls, emails, texts, flowers, meals, visits, and thoughts. They have been comforting during this difficult time and a reminder of the impact that Nathan has had on so many people. My name is Daniel Golding, and this is my wife, Hannah. We've known Nathan, I've known Nathan for the last three years, and I've had the opportunity to lead uh, a cabin with him at camp, uh, work through him, work with him throughout the summers, lead several small groups of crazy boys during the winter, along with going for several lunches, going to basketball games, or uh, practicing driving together. I've known Nathan for the last about 12 years. I don't know when (laughs) we all cross paths, but I've known him for a long time when I started coming to the church when I was 12, and um, I was with him on Sunday. Um, we went to Bibleville together. We led at Bibleville together. Um, shift, C23 on Fridays. I was his leader once, <laughs> and um, I'm sure that 
Nathan was extremely committed to God um, and that the kids at the program and the Rock Church as well. We are immensely honored to share the eulogy written and prepared by Nathan's mom, Rhonda, and as well as the rest of his family. Um, There is just too much that we can say about Nathan. There are so many stories that need to be told, but not enough paper to write them down. There is no words to describe the kind of man that he has grown into. From the time that Nathan started going to school at the age of three, we could all see he had a good heart. In kindergarten, a little girl got in trouble and was told to sit in the timeout zone. Nathan, feeling sad, went to the teacher and asked her if he could go and sit with her because she was all alone. That was just the start of the young man that we all got to know and love. So just to share a few of the private moments of Nathan uh, outside of what we already, uh, everyone already knows about him. The relationship Nathan had with his family was very special to him and each one of them. Each one holds several special memories in their hearts. For instance, he was always so excited to do whatever he could for his big brother, Ryan. Whether it is buying him a pack of smokes, putting some gas in his car, or buying him a shirt at Walmart that was accidentally too small for him, but fit Ryan perfect. One of the things that Nathan and Ryan loved to do was go to Apex. They were so excited that they would pay for three whole hours, but only half an hour in, they were too exhausted to continue. (laughs) When Ryan and his partner Maria found out that they were pregnant, they had no question in their mind who they wanted to be the godfather. They kept it hidden from Nathan, but they knew that they couldn't keep it all the way until the baby was born. And now we're all glad they didn't. Nathan was so honored and excited that when he was asked to be Lucy's godfather, he cried. As you can tell, Nathan and Ryan had a very special relationship. Now, if there was any kind of family relationship that was a little bit weird, it was the one between him and his dad. They loved each other so much, and they had a weird way of showing it. Like when asking for a hug, they would take their index finger and put it on each other's shoulder and say, okay, that's enough, or they would say, I love you to each other, and then say, just kidding. But seeing them together, you could feel the love between them. Now Zachary and Nathan's relationship was hard to describe. You knew that they loved each other, but they, did, but they lived in the same house, so it was more of a love-hate relationship. Zachary liked to bug Nathan about leaving his size 13 shoes all over the bedroom, or he was getting in trouble by Nathan for wearing one of his many hoodies. They grew up together and went to school together. Zachary was always there to protect his little big brother. Nathan loved his grandmother so much. But he also liked to tease her. He bugged her about being short, telling her that she better have somebody to go out with her because he didn't want her to get lost in the grass. (laughs) Or if he was misbehaving and grandma threatened him to kick him in the butt, he would first ask her, do you need a stepping stool? He loved to phone his grandmother and suck up to her, asking her to make lazy pierogies when they would come over to play canasta for the entire day. Or phoning her and asking her, Grandma, can we go to bingo? It never bothered him to spend the entire day with Grandma instead of out with friends. Nathan was such a determined young man. We saw that through school as he had his struggles. He was picked on because of his size, the kind of clothes he wore, and the way that he was in alternative programming. But that never let him, that never defer, deterred him from reaching his goals he, as he graduated in 2018. Other ways that he was so persistent and just wouldn't let things go is when he, brought his fir- when he bought his first vehicle. He knew what budget he had, and even though the Cadillac Escalades, the Camaros, the Hummers, and the Mustangs were all three times his budget, he still needed to show us, asking us if we can go and test drive them. But that is just one of the things that we so loved about Nathan. He was such an outgoing and relational person. He could relate to a five-year-old and then turn around and engage in conversation with the elderly. He was such a big part of family gatherings. For example, he would jump in the bouncy castles with the little ones, play tag with the older ones, beanbag toss with the adults, 
and then turn and play cards with grandma. He knew how to show his excitement and joy, but he was also able to be sad and consoling with those who needed it. There's going to be such a Nathan-sized hole at every event that Nathan was regular, regularly a part of. Nathan loved his family. Each had their own kind of relationship, but his relationship with his mother was very special. Not only was he her son, but he was her best friend. They did everything together. He even took her as his date to the staff Christmas parties. Her, their weekly Walmart trips were very special too, even though it stressed out mom um, since he shops worse than a girl, trying on clothes, changing his mind, and then holding his others up to him, asking, would this look good on me? <laughs> they always had such a great time though. They went to bingo together, played cards with grandma, spent hours talking, talking or watching some of their favorite TV shows like Big Brother, The Masked Singer, or America's Got Talent. Sometimes he would go out while the show would be airing, and he would get mad because his mom watched it already, but it didn't bother her to watch it again as long as he was with her. He was always worried about making sure she had everything she needed. He would help her put on her shoes when he was always her legs when she needed him to be. There was never any complaining, just lots of love. The Rock Church was such a huge part of his life. You were all family to him, and he wouldn't have it any other way. There were many days that he would just remember a memory of something that somebody did for him, and he would need to share it. It always filled our hearts hearing him talk about the kids he worked with or how excited he was about camp. It didn't matter if he was going for an interview in December. His mom told him, or he told his mom, when I go for that interview, I'm going to ask for three weeks off in July so I can go to camp. He hadn't even gotten the job yet, and he was already asking for time off because he didn't want to miss out on camp. Brianna would tell him that his job needed to be the top priority, but he wouldn't listen. He just loved the people, the kids, and God too much to not be a part of it. My memories of Nathan normally included camp, and he was very servant-hearted. He was always willing to serve in any way that he was asked or wherever he saw a need. He carried everyone's luggage in the pouring rain to their cabins, and he was always stacking chairs and carrying heavy things for people. <laughs> um, and he always did it with a smile on his face. Um, I also remember him in moments of worship where he was moved by the presence of God and responding in surrender to God's way of life for him. We got to experience many times in Montana and also at Elbow each year. Next, we have an opportunity to start the open mic time. You can share memories you had with Nathan by walking up to the front and by sharing, or by sharing it in the chat, and we'll try to address as many as we can. Uh, and just in the chat, make sure to uh, specify if you would like yours read publicly. Um, you can walk um, as you would like. I'm going to start first, but uh, up to the stage and these two mics here so you can line up one by one. Please don't step up onto the stage until the other person has exited. Uh, and then you can walk up and we'll be sanitizing the mics in between people. Um, a memory I would like to share um, is one that highlights Nathan's generosity. Um, one time uh, I picked him up going to Bibleville. <coughs> he gets into my car with the biggest grin on his face, which was so iconically Nathan. And he's like, dude, 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 dude. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> He's like, we're going to win a bunch of tickets to go to a basketball game. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of weird. Hi to you, too. Um, <laughs> and he goes to tell me that there's this new basketball shop that opened and that they uh, have this contest that if you tag each other, there's a possibility of winning. And, you know, we check it out, and there's lots and lots and lots of people who are entering. And it's like, okay, we're, we're not going to win. But you know what? Let's, let's go for it anyway. He convinces me. We enter. What do you know? We win. <laughs> Nathan wins. Yeah, I didn't win. He did. <laughs> um, and he was so generous that he said, well, you know what? Like, you bring your brother, and then we decided to bring a friend, Dalton Kingfisher. And the four of us, we had four tickets that we went to this basketball game. Um, not only that, like, at this time, Nathan wasn't working. But 
he was so extremely generous that at any time, even though he wasn't getting any food at the concession, even though he wasn't whatever it was, he would still, hey, dude, can I, can I, buy, you a, can I buy you a pop? Can I get you a drink? Dried ribs? Anything. Can, can I buy that for you? Like, it was always just absolutely jaw-dropping about the guy and his situation of not having a job. And I can imagine just when you're not working, there's not a lot of money at that time. And yet he's still so willing to, even though he is not going to spend the money cause to, to buy a drink or anything, he is always not only willing, but offering to give that up and to be self-sacrificing for another one. That's just one story of his generosity. So if you would like to uh, come uh, and line up as you guys would like, uh, this is a time that you guys can share. So once again, just one by one, and um, we will also um, read any um, in the chat that you would like to be read. Uh, I met Nathan when he was 11 years old at Bibleville, and he used to come in there, and sometimes he would turn that place upside down. And one time, I grabbed him by the back of the neck, and this was before Plan for Cat. This, <laughs> this, this is when Bibleville used to be the wild, wild west. <laughs> and I grabbed him by the neck, and, uh, and uh, anyways, he goes and sits by the wall, and this lady comes up to me, and she goes, I think you should go talk to that kid. The kid over there is like, Nah, nah, he's okay. She goes, I think you really need to go talk to him. So I go over there, and he's got these big tears running down his eyes, these big tears. I was like, you, you, you pressure pointed me. <laughs> I was like, Nate, listen, can we keep this between us and not like, get back to Dallas? <laughs> and from that instant, me and Nate had this bond. And what happened was this kid that used to turn Bible Bill upside down started to become a leader. He had his own table there. He had to sit there, and the kids that used to migrate around me were now mag- migrating around Nathan because he had this charisma and this heart, Rhonda. And when I met Na- uh, Zach and Nathan, I said, I have to meet their mom because there's something different about these kids. They have a heart and a gentleness about them. And, you know, just another story is uh, who was at Nathan's 13-year-old birthday party at the pool? Anyone there? I tell you that day. Only Nathan has the drawing. So it was Sunday. The party was after church. Only Nathan had the drawing power to draw the, draw the whole church to the p- birthday party. <laughs> and when we got there, the sun was shining. And that day was just right. You could feel God's hand on that day. And Nathan was the star of the party. And that was his day. And it was w- such a wonderful day that he drew the whole church to that birthday party. It was just a beautiful thing, uh, a tribute to who he was and the charisma he had when he walked into a room. And Rhonda, when I told you that you know, like, Nathan, what you said, we led him. But what he did for us leaders and validated us as leaders and made us feel special and that heart he had to validate us and that gentle heart he had, I don't think it could be matched. Thank you. Thanks. I've known Nathan, I guess, for eight years, and uh, he was always this enthusiastic little guy. I always remember that about him. Um, Talk about generosity, he was the most generous kid I've ever known. You know, I used to take him out. We we used to hang out quite a bit, and I'd take him out for dinner, for lunch. And he was always saying, Travis, can I take these leftovers to my parents, to my brothers at home? And I said, absolutely. And... Always, always he was thinking about other people. And, and I was just very honored to be part of his life. He, he wanted me to be part of his baptism uh, when he graduated. And uh, also when he bought his first vehicle, he was so proud to invite me to say, Travis, can you come? I want to test drive this uh, police, police cruiser. It was a Tahoe, big white. And, uh, and I said, well, okay, Nathan, yeah, it's what other vehicles have you saw? He was in the Escalades, Camaros, <laughs> and then a Dodge Caravan. I'm thinking, a Dodge Caravan? <laughs> and uh, so, anyways, we, long story short, he, uh, we took this police cruiser for test drive, and it was really solid. 
And uh, I said, Nathan, I think this is the vehicle for you because it'll fit your size. Like, you're just a big man, right? So, and, uh, so yeah, he, he was all excited about the decals and stuff that was on there. And um, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Nathan is, he was like adopted son. I always tell Rhonda, he had a loving family. He always loved his, his mom, his grandma, his brothers. And he always talked about you guys, Ryan and Zach. He, and there's times when you guys went through hardships, and he was always asking for me when we got together to pray for you guys. And he was so honored, by the way, to, to be asked to be the god the godparent of your uh, child that's coming soon. So God bless Nathan, and I know he's in a better place. And he, uh, he rubbed off on me in so many good, good ways. And uh, I just love that boy. Nathan, in Hebrew, a gift from God. That's what the translation is, and that's what he was to your family, to us as a church, to people that met Nathan would never forget. We had a great relationship, Nathan and I. I remember on Rhonda's birthday as the drive-by wave, remember Hong Kong? And Rhonda texted me after, you made my day, but you made my Nathan's day. And he has blessed me so many times. As you'd look, he'd look around, and he was always taller than everybody, and he'd be looking around, smiling, and people were going to him, and he never turned anybody away, child, older person like myself, or anybody else. He loved you, Brian. He loved you, Zach, so much. He really did. And you know, he's in heaven now. And you can be in heaven, too. And so that's what we all look forward to is the day when we meet Nathan again in heaven. Shay. I've known Nathan for about six years. I went to high school with him and some of the memories that I have on my heart is that in that same police cruiser we were blast Miley Cyrus party in the USA all the time at least every every time we hung out he had to put it on once that was our song he was like Shay guess what song I'm putting it on I had to pretend I was like I have no idea <laughs> he would turn it on we would blast it we would sing it at the top of our lungs. <laughs> um, as of recently, we went bowling a lot. We ended up going go-karting, we went mini-golfing, we went rock climbing. We wanted to do everything and anything we possibly could to have a great time. He was also someone who came to my church for um, our CNC group, our college and career. Uh, I go to Pleasant Hill Mennonite Church, and he touched the lives of my CNC group so heavily. He made connections there. He made roots there, and it just shows the love and compassion that you guys have for him, and it just shows, Rhonda, that you are a beautiful mom, and you show so much compassion and generosity for your children. He is someone who did struggle in high school but I'm so thankful that he was a part of Drama Guild with me, wrestling. He was someone who encouraged everyone around him no matter what. And I'm just so blessed to be able to have you guys in my life. And something that always came to mind is height. I always told Nathan and Zach I would be taller than them one day. It hasn't happened yet. I'll find high heels one day tall enough. <laughs> you know what? We'll work together, it's okay. But that's something that always came to mind. And I'm so blessed to be able to have the memories I have. Uh, 
Hi, I'm Willie. I'm uh, Rhonda's first cousin. And uh, I was away for a lot of uh, Nathan's early years, but I came back to Saskatoon in 08. I guess he'd have been 12. Oh, he'd have been 8. <laughs> so it's... Uh, but yeah, every time I would see Nathan, he'd always have a, a, a happy greeting for me, and you know, sometimes too big of a hug. <laughs> you know, felt like I'd just get buried by that kid. But I, I remember uh, thinking to myself, you got to be nice to this one, because I think he's going to keep growing. <laughs> and luckily I, I did, <laughs> because I think I was in his good books. You know, they grow up so quick, and, uh, you know, these kids these days, they got a lot of, uh, a lot of decisions to make when they're young, and they can make wrong decisions, and, you know, I can say, like, for all Rhonda's boys, they've been making good decisions, and Nathan was that way. You know, he could have taken a wrong turn at any point, but that kid, he had really good guidance. And he's got real good structure from the church here, you know, so I'm, I'm thankful that though his life was short, you know, he was, he was really, really on a straight line, you know, now that I'm going to miss him a lot too. You know, we had lots of really fun times at uh, Grandma's house, you know, behind her house in a little park there, we'd have meals together. And, you know, between Nathan playing games... And, you know, taking over the food table. <laughs> you know, the, the thing I remember most, or I don't know if I was impressed or if I was worried about these two, but him and Zach, when they would get to, to sparring with each other. <laughs> I tell you, do you hear thunder? <laughs> do you think about two big buffaloes charging each other? <laughs> and then getting tangled up? on the ground and then stand up and then go and sit at the picnic table and finish their dinner. <laughs> you know? So those are the things I'm going to always remember about Nathan. You know, take it from us too soon. You know, but he had a big impact on us. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a tough day. So I love you guys. Everyone, thank you so much for coming. I'm Nathan's grandma. And there's some things about Nathan that I have to tell you. He was, um, I had nicknames for all my grandkids. And he was my bugaboo. But over the years, I called him Bug. And that's what he was. <laughs> Just as simple as that. He was a bug. <laughs> he teased everybody about everything. Uh, Ryan bought a car that was pretty small. And he said, don't worry, Ryan. If the car breaks down, you can always put it in the back of mine. <laughs> or you can put it in your backpack. <laughs> and he always bugged me about being short, which is fine. But, you know, he loved family so much. And everyone here at the church was part of his family. But he'd come home from work sometimes and he'd phone me. Grandma, guess what? And I said, what? He says, I saw Auntie Lisa on the bus. A in the, that just made his day because he got to see Auntie Lisa. And another time he was, uh, oh, what do you call it? Um, um, what's that word for? Mascot. He was a mascot for a hockey team downtown, for hometown hockey. And I'm probably telling tales out of school, but that's okay. Uh, he came home, and he says, Grandma, guess what? And I said, well, he says, I got a picture with Uncle John. 
Ron's brother John is meant a lot to Nathan, and he couldn't wait to tell us that he got to stand and take a picture. And he says, but I couldn't even talk to Uncle John because it wasn't allowed. But he says, I got to have a picture with him. So, you know, there, there's, his heart was so full. And uh, I, I hope everybody can take some of his strength because that's what he's given me. I would not be able to be here and say what I did if it hadn't got the strength from Nathan. That's okay, Grandma. It'll get better when you get taller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, miss you, Bug. But you're not gone. You're all over my house. Love you. We got one from the, ch a few from the chat, so I'm going to read those to you guys now. So from Sandy, it says, I remember Nathan when I was a C23. Nathan and Zach welcomed me at C23. And Angel said, my favorite memory was when we had a dance battle at camp in 2013, and I tried to be a big show off with my power moves, and of course, me always had some of course I always had something in my hand like a drink or an ice cream and well this time I had a pop and he was joking about falling and of course I tripped in the hole and poured it all over my face and we had the biggest laughing fit <laughs> and um, from Alyssa and Ethan they said two things I will remember fondly about Nathan his dedication and love for his mom and when he was so proud of his broken leg a few years ago he was not deterred from making the most of his summer, even though his leg was broken, broken. And it seemed that he wore that broken leg like a badge of honor. And then lastly, from Dakota, it says, the memory that I share with Nathan is when I went to his grad and he was so excited to meet his new baby cousin, Dominic. Every time I went over to see Rhonda and Nathan, he was always there and he had a, a funny or positive thing to say. He helped his mom out a lot. Every time I brought Dominic, he was always so excited to have him there. He was always a happy young man and had nothing bad to say. I will for sure miss Nathan. His little co cousin Dominic and I um, tried saying his name for the first time ever. His little cousin Dominic just tried saying his, first, his name for the first time ever, sorry. <laughs> um, I will always miss him forever. Please share this message. Hi, my name's Perry, and I've known Nathan for probably 10 years. And I first met him when I first started uh, driving bus for the Rock Church, and I thank the Rock Church and the kids' ministry, because if it wasn't for this ministry, I would have never met Nathan. And <laughs> I'm kind of be picky piggybacking on some of the stuff that's already been saying, but when I first drive, started driving bus, one of the kids that he... The only name I knew was Nathan, settle down, Nathan, settle down. He had so much energy, and over the 10 years, uh, watching him come up to uh, C23, because I decided to drive for C23 after Bibleville, and to watch him want to follow the steps of Zach, and to see the, the, the beautiful relationship that those two boys had, and... and uh, at camp to see the, ex the energy that he always had there. And it slowly went, and watching him mature into this young man that desired to follow God. And so, I loved having him in our cabin. And one year, I, <laughs> we were working as a team. And uh, so anyways, I said, we, after, the, after the day and everybody got into the cabin and we're going to have a devotional time and it was Tuesday night and uh, Nathan had been playing really really hard playing games out there he like he always loved to do and he's laying on the top of the bed and I tapped him on the shoulder say hey Nathan we're going 
I'm going to, you know, have a time of prayer over the kids and, you know, and uh, can you come down with me? And he just kind of looked at me and says, hey, Perry, you know, nothing ever happens till Wednesday night. So <laughs> he, he had a case, and it was true. It always seemed we had a breakthrough with the Holy Spirit on, on Wednesday night, and we saw God move in a very powerful way. And I was so blessed to see Nathan get touched by God, and I saw the fruits of it. And I, I saw the love that he had for his family, for his brother, as has all been said, and he was proud, always proud of his family. It was such a blessing and such a blessing to me, and I'm going to miss Nathan dearly. I, I'm going to miss him when I come to C23. I'm going to miss him when I go to camp. But anyways, I thank God for the opportunity to be able to be a part of his life. Thank you. Just one last one from the message, and then we'll go into a, a song. Um, this is from Michael. He said, I taught Nathan in grade 8. He had a heart of gold. His commitment and spirit towards extracurricular activities was second to none. Nathan will always be one of my juggling masters. Check, check, there we go. It's so precious to hear all of those stories and memories about Nathan. Um, I had the privilege of being a leader at The Rock um, for the past nine years and watching Nathan grow up through Bibleville and then being a leader, uh, LIT, we called them leader in training, and then uh, a youth as well. And one of my memories of Nathan um, was during one of the summer camps. It was our last year of having Bibleville all in one week. And we had an explosion of children. I think there was close to 100 Bibleville kids. And so Nathan very quickly was promoted from leader in training <laughs> to a uh, full-on leader of a cabin and had to manage. <laughs> he had to grow up real fast. He had to manage these chaotic little Bibleville boys. And he did so amazing. <laughs> I just remember swelling with pride um, to see him rise to the occasion. And I think that's one thing I just remember about watching Nathan grow through the past several years is he always rose to the occasion. <laughs> Sometimes he would make ridiculous mistakes and then he would just have amazing um, comebacks. And he just found that maturity and um, sincerity and the passion within him. And he always pursued what is good. Um, he always pursued God, and he was a worshiper. I loved watching him in the crowd worship when we would do songs and music. And so it's such a privilege to share in some worship songs with you here today. Um, I know that it just doesn't make sense, and it's so against our nature to sing worship songs to God in the face of such tragedy and loss. Um, sometimes it's all we can do when everything is stripped away. And it's what Nathan would want us to do. <laughs> and so, in the midst of it all, to whatever degree you can, would you join us with another couple songs in turning our attention to God? He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Mm -hmm. 
So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. things that are making this special for Nathan. The one thing is nothing changes. Impromptu, extra large Tim Hortons in the front row, people laughing, people talking, people crying. Family, I'm so sorry for your loss. There's been so many amazing things said about Nathan today that uh, this is one of the most difficult things I have to do is share this time with you and, and share some words, hopefully, of comfort. But ironically, it's one of the easiest things to do because nobody has had to lie about anything. All this stuff that's being said about Nathan is totally true. I'm sure we could find somewhere, somewhere that must have a bad story or a bad experience with Nathan. I've just never met them. And um, that, that is his heart. And uh, I got to meet Nathan for the first time on a Bible, you guys hear lots about Bibleville. We had a Bibleville friend night where uh, if you live somewhere, we would do a special night just for you and your friends on that block. And so Nathan and Zach, the first time they came that I remember, some friends had invited them just for their own little private party here at the church. We had a snack, we had a Bible story, and then we ended at Rutgers. And it's kind of since that week, 13 years ago or whatever it was, they have barely messed a week at church ever. That they just kept coming and going after God, and uh, it's been a amazing, an amazing joy. My wife and I have been here in Saskatoon and doing ministry for over 25 years, been doing ministry longer than we've been married together. Um, but we, somebody said today we're going to have a Nathan-sized hole. Nathan's a picture of why we do what we do, that uh, 
You can share Jesus with a young child and they accept him and they learn to love their family and tr persevere through difficult things and learn to love others and learn to, to serve community and be an upstanding part of society. There's so many that have gone through and done that and so many of us struggle with that, but Nathan is, is kind of that picture. What a privilege to have been a part of his life and thank you, mom and dad and brothers for trusting us. You really had to trust us with him because you, did he ever live at home? <laughs> he, he lived his, it's like one bedroom at home and one bedroom at church. It must have been because he, he spent a lot of time and he was on sports teams and drama teams and he just loved being a part and giving and giving and giving. So while this is difficult, it's a real honor and privilege to be able to be a part of this tribute and, and uh, hopefully bring some words of comfort today. We've said and expressed our sorrow to, to family, but to those of you, friends and family grieving here today, and those of you online, you will also have a, have a nathan size hole. And uh, when something happens so traumatically and sudden and shockingly, it doesn't really matter if you've been in close relationship with that person or a little bit distant or haven't connected for a while, it grips your heart and it gets your attention. It, uh, it's shocking and sad on behalf of that person and that family themselves, but it also brings us kind of face to face with our own immortality and the reality that, that we aren't guaranteed not only the next day, but the next hour. And it's kind of like a reality check of where are our relationships lining up, where are our priorities lining up. And in a shock, there's there's great questions, there's great confusion, there's uncertainty, there's anger, there's doubt, there's dismay. And I don't know if you need it today or not, whether you're here or near or far, but you have permission. We're talking lots about God today, but some people are wondering, how could God have let this happen? I want you to know that God can handle those questions, and that he sees you and he knows and he feels your pain. We pray that you will be comforted in the midst of this journey of grieving. And as much as we are crying today and, and laughing today and reminiscing today and comfort consoling each other today, it takes process. And so there's going to be good days that feel good, and there's going to be bad days that feel bad, and there's going to be a bunch of days in the middle. But Scripture says that Jesus is able to sympathize with us because he's gone through what we are going through. And he has sent the Holy Spirit to comfort us. Well, I've offered condolences. I also want to say thank you. Thank you for sharing Nathan with us and allowing all of us to be a part of his life. But on behalf of the family, I want to say thank you to everyone else. Because as great as Nathan is and was, he really was great because of all the, he was just like a sponge taking in all the good stuff that people could throw at him. That if you were choosing to invest in him with just a hello or share the excitement, or if you were investing some training or some teaching, whether you're a school or coach or leader at youth group, you have a part to play in what we're celebrating today because you chose to share your life, to sacrifice your lifetime and energy. And what we're talking about today is the culmination of what was placed into Nathan's life. And praise God for a uh, compassionate mentoring home has been, has been talked about and that we could all plant into good soil. There's the African proverb you all know. It takes a village to raise a child. And that's the story of every child today. There's so many challenges in this world that we need to watch out for our kids and we need to pour into them. And so when you think about your choice on whether you have time or willing to invest again, in somebody else, whether or not it's the, the previous one has ended in a tragedy like this or times have just changed and you're wondering again, I want you to remember Nathan. That Nathan is a picture of somebody, of some people, of some community that chose to invest in his life. So on behalf of Nathan, I ask you, who's next? Who will you choose to invest in next? Because Nathan wouldn't want it to end with him. Mark chapter 10 says this. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, 
for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. What a verse for Nathan. Even at 20, he was able to receive the kingdom of God and God's love and your love like a little child. He could be entrusted with responsibility and the next moment seem like a giddy kid again for a few minutes. What a picture of being able to receive the kingdom of God as a child. Even though the disciples that were with Jesus were trying to keep the kids away, Jesus took an interest in kids and Jesus took an interest in Nathan and Jesus takes an interest in you and me. And Jesus, with his disciples that at one point were trying to chase children away from him, he kept pouring into them. Jesus took these disciples under his wing. And uh, we can often start thinking about the disciples in Bible times as lots of gray hair, uh, old and wise, or at least old if not wise. But the disciples that followed Jesus, they said, were really teenagers and young adults, most likely. Not the gray-haired wise people you see painted on Last Supper pictures. But Nathan, at a very young age, chose to put himself under Jesus' wing and stay in Jesus' arms to grow closer to him as a follower of Jesus. And as I was thinking of and preparing for today and what might be shared, I couldn't help but think of how people talk about the 12 disciples that followed Jesus, a little bit of a motley crew, a little bit of a ragtag crew, a tax collector that was seen poorly, a hardworking fisherman, all these different guys, not just well clean cut guys from university education, but, but guys with a lot of passion and a lot of zeal and a lot of energy. That sounds like, J- like Nathan. That's Nathan. Nathan was a disciple and a follower of Jesus. These disciples weren't perfect. Nathan wasn't perfect, although we're talking about all the good stuff today. He, like the disciples of Jesus, let their hearts be teachable, let his heart be teachable so that he could become more and more like Jesus and live the life that Jesus had planned for him. And so, as Jesus trained his disciples, and, and the scripture says many things that disciples of, and followers of Jesus are supposed to do, I want to point out a couple things that Nathan took to heart and that I think we can take to heart as we choose to follow Jesus. First of all, Scripture says that we're to bear each other's burdens. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Nathan had a compassionate heart. I'm going to try not to duplicate all the good stuff that has been said, but I just want to say for such a big guy, he had such a tender heart and he could be moved to tears on behalf of someone's distress just like that. That when we were taking prayer requests in church, he would often have somebody that needed prayer. When somebody was, was uh, crying because of sorrow in their life and needing prayer, he was often there with his arm around them, wanting to make sure that somebody was praying for them or he was praying for them. He would be willing to carry people's burdens and he'd be willing to help out to do whatever was needed to nathan was fulfilling christ's command to love others but not just when it was convenient to him not just when it felt good not just when it was something in it for him but rather one who would who could share pain take load get in the game with his own feelings and emotions and and responsibilities and it didn't matter i don't know if i've seen Anyone that has uh, the barriers gone or, or uh, doesn't see color, doesn't see anything, it's just like, if you're a person, I want to know you. That he, he loved everybody. Didn't matter where you came from, what your history was, what your ethnicity was, what your abilities were. How much better would it be if we all could live like Nathan in following Jesus that way? There'd be a lot of different news reports this past weekend and this past week than what we've been hearing. What would we do if, rather than kick them when they're down, we would fulfill the law of Christ like Nathan did and bear each other's burdens, no matter the cost and no matter what's going on, rather than turning a blind eye or a cold shoulder. Nathan put his trust in Jesus to bear his burdens. Nathan didn't just carry other people's burdens, but he realized Nathan couldn't, he couldn't do his own life on his own, and so because he trusted Jesus, Jesus had him stepping into other people's lives. 
Jesus came to do that for us, to walk this life, to experience the same type of losses and distress and struggles in our lives. But Jesus took it a step further, and he took the weight of the sin of the world. Every person who would ever live, the the punishment of that sin went on him to pay the punishment and penalty for it by dying on the cross so that we could all have that punishment paid for in advance for, for those of us. Jesus took our burdens if we give them to him. We're supposed to, scripture says we're supposed to bear each other's burdens. Second one is it says, it's, one of the things it says is to serve. In one place in the, in the scriptures, it talks about these 12 disciples, these ragtag group of guys, and they actually get into a, a verbal fight. I don't know if they got into a Zach and Nathan type fight, but they got in, maybe if there was fights that didn't involve the, the physical contact, but there was some good verbal um, jabbing going on between these disciples because they were basically saying, I'm more important to Jesus. No, I'm more important to Jesus. No, I want to sit by Jesus when I'm in heaven. No, I want to sit by Jesus when I'm in heaven. Who's most important? Then Jesus says this. He, he said, he called them together in Mark chapter 10, it says, and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them? Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. It's easy to say, based on this description, that Nathan was great. Because he was willing to serve. He was willing to be a slave at all. And trust me, I'm not sure mom or pastor made Nathan a bigger slave some days. (laughs) Nathan, can you come early to set up chairs? Nathan, can you mop the floor before you go to bed at camp? Nathan, can you make your bed? Nathan, can you do the dishes? Nathan, I need help with the daycare kids. He was truly willing to follow Christ in the place of being a servant. He always had a big smile, and he was always willing to do the action. But here, if I can use the word kicker again, here's the kicker on behalf of Nathan. His heart was always in it. It was always coming from an authentic place. I'm sure he made himself do some things sometimes. I just don't know when that happened. Because he was willing to be, he had a heart of a servant, and so his outward actions just flowed from who he was. He was living from who he was, his true self, as we like to say. Man, I wish I was more like Nathan. I wish my heart was more pure and more authentic and more willing to serve people the way Nathan was willing to do it, no matter the cost and no matter the time. His attitude was amazing. We can learn from Nathan as he learned to follow Christ in this area. Nathan could have given up, could have, turned his back on a bunch of stuff to do whatever he wanted, but often he was sacrificing what he could be doing because actually his desire has changed, and he wanted to be around people. He wanted to serve. He wanted to help. It wasn't just self-denial. It was his desires has changed to serve others. Man, again, imagine our world if we blindly served others to help. Jesus came to serve us by giving his life away so that we may have life if we believe in him. Nathan followed his example, and Nathan would want us to follow that example. And then finally, we had bear your burdens that Nathan did for others, serve others, and then love. Jesus' commandment in Matthew 22 was, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. I truly believe Nathan understood this, that he loved God, He loved others, but I think he actually was able to do that well because he loved himself. I think he had struggles, like any teenager does, learning to accept himself. But at the same time, he would walk in a room with such a confidence and such an acceptance of himself that I think many of us adults in this room wish we could have that same level of confidence. Jesus modeled this type of love, and Nathan followed Jesus in it. But Jesus also said in 1510, of John. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that your, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Rhonda, I wanted to end this part with joy. He had such a contagious joy. He always seemed joyful, except when he was sad, go figure, carrying somebody else's burden and sorrow. But man, it was really one or the other most of his life. Wouldn't you say? That, that he walked around with this contagious type of joy, and I think that came because he was 
Love in life, love in God, love in others, love in himself. And Jesus says, when you love him and you follow his ways, your joy will be complete. I don't know if you can make up the type of joy that Nathan was exuding. I don't think you can fake that stuff. And I think it came from an authentic relationship with Jesus that he had this fullness, that Jesus made him special, made him bubbly, made him larger than life, but then also did the real work in his life to transform him into that. Joy is what overflowed. Nathan followed Jesus in bearing burdens, serving, loving, and being joyful. We can do that, not by trying to be like Nathan, but by focusing our eyes on Jesus. Maybe Nathan never got to tell you in this room or online the reason for his hope, the hope he had in Jesus. I have the privilege of sharing it with you today. It's both a privilege and a responsibility because one day I plan to be in heaven. And one day I plan to hear from Jesus, well done, Dallas. But I also want to hear from Nathan, thank you, Dallas, for telling my family and friends how to be here with me. And so you forgive me if this comes across too much like a preach, but I would rather make Nathan happy today than worry about if I've offended you by saying too much. I can't see you through those masks. Will you nod for me? Will you give me permission? (laughs) Give me permission, please. Nathan would be first to tell you today that he is in heaven not because he was a good boy. Nathan was a great guy, but he wasn't great enough to get himself to heaven. He needed a Savior, just like you and I need a Savior. Not everything was perfect in his life. He was a sinner like you and I. The Scripture says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all missed God's standard of holiness and perfection. You see, God is perfect. He's here beginning and end. He's never ending. And he always has been and he always will be. And in his perfection, he created mankind in past history to have a relationship with him. And in his perfection, he created mankind to share the beauty of all that God could have and the beauty of relationship with God, but also knew that he had to create mankind with a free will. Because it's not a beautiful love-give-and-take relationship if you're programmed to be a robot and you have to give love to your creator. That's not a real relationship. And so mankind, very shortly while living on this earth, chose their own path. Rather than following God, thought they could be God and make up their own minds and follow their own ways and disobey what God's plan was for them. And that was the first sin. And now... Decades and centuries later, we see the consequences of one little sin as layer after layer, society after society, that's perpetrated and penetrated with sin and brokenness, what we have. That it's a broken, fallen world. And yet God wasn't turning his back on his creation, and it says that that he was showing us how to come into relationship with him. First in the scriptures, we see how perfect God is and, and how amazing he is. And we see all that God was showing that man was going to need to do in order to have relationship, but man always fell short. And so it says, at the perfect time, God sent his son, Jesus. And Jesus came, as we almost approach Christmas, to remember that Jesus did come in the form of a human. He came and he was laid in in a manger in a stable. And he came and he lived a perfect life, even though he was tempted in all ways that you and I have been tempted. And he showed people who the Father God was in heaven, but he also talked about who the Father God was in heaven. And he taught and showed people who God was in the flesh. And so he was fully God and fully man, and it's some type of miracle that I couldn't preach in a full day if I had time to tell you about today. But I do know that he lived a perfect life, and at the end of his perfect life, he was condemned a criminal and put to death on a cross Because God allowed him to go to the cross to die of death to pay the penalty for the sin that you and I have committed and that Nathan committed. And then he rose again to show his power over death so that not only the debt could be paid, but life could be lived following that. And that's why Nathan lived a life loving God here and now he lives a life with God in heaven and why we can be so sure of that. John chapter 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Nathan did this. He did it at a young age. He actually prayed the prayer. I'll never forget smiling to myself, because I've prayed that prayer with kids and camps and youth group over and over and over. 
and I lost count of how many times Nathan put up his hand saying, I prayed that prayer. I prayed that prayer. No, now put up your hand if you prayed that for the first time. Nathan, for the 27th time, put up his hand. Is that because he was never following Jesus? No. He was following Jesus all the way along. It's not about one prayer. It's about our heart's intent. And Nathan was just constantly wanting to make sure that he was good with God and receive God's love and be in that space and place with Jesus. You see, it's not about a get-out-of-hell-free card. It's about getting to live this life on earth with God, with Jesus, with him being present in your life, so that also, as someday, you get to experience that with him in heaven. All of us have lived a life like Nathan. What does that mean? Family, school, work, sorrow, trouble, joy. But like Nathan's story in this past week, we don't get to write the chapters. We don't know how the end or when the end comes. And it's sorrowful and it's painful. But that is why when we have opportunity, we place our faith in Jesus Christ and we give our lives over to him to receive his forgiveness. There's lots of people watching online today that you went to church with Nathan or you went to camp with Nathan and you're, you're remembering some of the stuff that we're talking about today that you heard at camp. James chapter 5, verse 19 to 20 says, My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. If you're listening today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus or you're not really following him, you could pay Nathan the highest honor by allowing this moment of tribute to him to allow your wandering self, if you've wandered away from Jesus, to come back to him. What an amazing moment that would be for you to come to Jesus as Nathan followed Jesus. I'm going to pray a prayer, and it's not a magic prayer, and it's a simple prayer, and you don't have to pray it out loud. You can just pray it in your heart. But I want to say a simple prayer so that you have an idea of the words that you can use and how simple it was when Nathan was 7 and 9 and 13 and 17 when he prayed those prayers. (laughs) Would you pray? if these words express your heart. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love me. You see my broken heart. I believe in you. You see where I'm at. I ask you to forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your life. I am sorry for my sin. Help me to live for you. Show me your way and your plan and give me a hunger for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, we have some little books at the back. If you're online, you can get a hold of us at the church. We'll get them to you. But it's called Finding the Hope as well as a DV called My Hope. And if you would like more information about the type of stuff that Nathan this, this Jesus that he was following, you can pick one of those up out on your way after church. We talked about the Chevy Tahoe. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. I was under the understanding he was still going to get his license. Is that correct? Am I right? Yeah, he, was on the he was on the waiting list. COVID waiting list. <laughs> I think that's amazing, and it sums up a lot. that Nathan. I was at an event in the summer with Nathan, and he was just considering buying this vehicle, and he was going around and showing this white Tahoe to everyone. And I'm going, do you have your license yet, dude? Buying that vehicle in advance, what a statement of hope and confidence. I am getting my license, there's no doubt. Let's, let's get the truck first just to make sure we're good to go. <laughs> he wasn't just going to talk about it. That prayer we prayed right now isn't just talk. You see, Nathan went out and bought that truck and the ownership transferred. It went from whoever owned it to him. When you pray that prayer, it's not about just hoping someday that you can be in heaven. If you've prayed that and meant it in your heart, you've transferred ownership of your own life over to God. And you're saying that he is going to be leading and guiding and directing your life. Be encouraged in that today, that we don't, even in times of sorrow, that we aren't walking this alone. And that while while Jesus is in heaven and Nathan is there with him, we get to live the life God has planned for us now 
and we're grateful, so grateful for the impact that Nathan has made on our, on our lives. We're grateful to God for how he allowed him to be a part of all our different situations. Let us walk out our lives in honor to God and in tribute to this young man. God bless you. We're going to sing one more song before Pastor Dwayne comes and close. Stop working, you never stop, never stop working. 
Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst, I worship you. wonderful to, to hear just this whole tapestry of, of accommodation for a, a life well lived. And we, it's such a blessing to be able to uh, just remember things together, to grieve together, to celebrate together, to laugh, to cry. Uh, Karen and I had the privilege of, of knowing Nathan the last uh, four and a half years. And uh, it, it, a lot of special memories. In that, my favorite is a tidal wave that he created when he was baptized. <laughs> Just, uh, I'll never forget that. And uh, that was so special. And it just showed kind of how overflowing his life was mm -hmm. in love for others and love for God's people. And uh, one of the programs that we've been referring to is C23, and that actually means uh, Psalm 23, Club Psalm 23, and want to read and uh, read this together and encourage you to s let's stand together, uh, apart from family, but can we stand together and, uh, and as I read this, uh, make this your prayer uh, for you and, and for the family as well. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Heavenly Father, we uh, just bow before you today, and we thank you that you, you create us in your, your very own image to reflect how wonderful you are, to reflect back praises, to reflect back love, we thank you for recreating uh, Nathan in, the, in our midst and in our, his family, in the church community, in, the, in his school, in the workplace. And Lord, we, we just thank you for the gift of life that Nathan was to us, how he impacted each and every one of us in different ways. Thank you for uh, just showing us what it, what it means to have compassion to others, to uh, think not just about himself, but his family, to make sacrifices for them. We thank you for his heart of service. We thank you uh, just for this moment together. And Lord, we uh, especially remember uh, Rhonda and family. And Lord, we just lift them up to you. And we pray that they might realize that you are the good shepherd and you are walking with them and you're leading them and your rod and your staff are right there to comfort them. Mm -hmm. And even though they do walk through this valley right now, they don't need to fear evil or darkness. For you are here. You are with them. And Lord, we, we pray that we will continue just to lift them up every time and every remembrance of Nathan. That we would continue to pray 
for these days ahead. We thank you that you have lifted them up and carried them in this last uh, 10 days. And Lord, we pray that as a body we could continue to support and remember and pray and, and, uh, and comfort and provide for. And we thank you for everyone who has had a part already. And we pray that they could count on us in the coming days, weeks, months, years ahead. Thank you, Lord, for family. And we thank you also that you've created us when we walk the Jesus road, that we can be brothers and sisters in an even deeper way than blood relatives. And so we thank you for that as a church body, the fullness of you is here in every way. Thank you for this moment, this last uh, few moments that we've had just to cherish and to remember. And so, Lord, we pray that you would strengthen our hearts and strengthen our minds and our wills for the days ahead. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Rhonda and Zach will uh, be led to the, to the back just to greet people on the way out. Remember, we'll be socially distanced. And remember, we'll, we'll be dismissed from the back rows and, and going forward to the front. And we, uh, yeah, thank you each and every one for your attendance here today.